Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So what we're doing tonight, um, I get a lot of comments about this silly little tool here. Um, this is something I made um, when I ran a, a job shop and we used to design and build our own equipment. Well, we had some kind of preferential fastener sizes that we worked with and so I just kind of made this wrench up or this kind of double-ended T-handle uh, to deal with uh, a lot of the same size fasteners on a machine when we were doing assembly work or servicing machines or whatever. Um, and literally didn't put a lot of thought into it when I, uh, when I built it. But it's turned out to be like this super handy little tool, right? And uh, just the, you know, the ability to, to spin it and, uh, and then get a little torque and then have two sizes and it just kind of works out. Now I've replaced these blades a couple of times. They're silver soldered into the uh, into the handle here, and I'll show you how to do all that. But there's an opportunity for me to make another one of these, and that's what this vise is about here. So I bought this new vise here, and yes, I bought this vise full price uh, from our buddies over at uh, Mari Tool, and they had them on sale and uh, free shipping. So I got one for my new machine, which you guys will see at some point. Um, so anyway, I got a couple of uh, Bondus, uh, you know, just the plain blades, the ball tip blades, which we're going to silver solder into a new handle. And how they're used, in this case here, this vise is kind of unique and it's got a lot of different uh, kind of features. And one of them is you can uh, pop these soft jaws off, okay, with that size, right? And then the other one is um, uh, you can actually remove and reverse these the main jaw parts here so let's go ahead and do that and that's this size here and you can already see I could have used a little bit of extra leverage and then this is on dowel pin so it you you basically push this off like so let's see if I can do it with my fingers yeah looks like it's working keep going maybe I can lift it now that Let's see. okay and then you can actually swap this around so you can have the soft jaws on the inside or you can put talon jaws in here whatever you want or hard jaws in there so it's kind of universal that way so but it's got a couple of the same size fasteners on it um, so I wanted to make up a, a dedicated wrench that kind of goes with the vise and stays with the vise where the vise is being used so they always have them the tool that I need close at hand and you can't lose the bits. So let me get, uh, let me show you how we're going to do the handle and then we'll prepare the parts and then uh, we'll put one together. Alright, so the main bits we have to make are this little cross here and what we have here is some, this is a, uh, and it's 10 millimeter diameter stainless steel, 3 8 diameter stainless for us uh, Imperial folks and um, this one is the cross piece, and I've already um, faced the ends and then rounded the corners. I figured, I figured I'd do a nicer job than, uh, than what I did on the original one that uh, every, everybody's fascinated with. So uh, we'll, we'll, we're going to do a, a knock-up job on this one. So um, I got that, and then what we have to do is um, we have to drill holes in, the, uh, in these little spuds here. Um, so that we can silver braze these these in and what we want is we want to measure the corner dimensions here okay across the the hex part you know to the points and then determine the the drill size from that we want this not to wiggle around but we want it to slide in pretty easily that way uh, the solder can flow in there nicely and uh, and then when we if we have to if we these wear out and we got to change them you can pull them out uh, kind of by hand uh, when they're you know when you reheat the thing so anyway let's uh, get a couple of drills we'll go over to the lathe and uh, we'll go to town Oh, 
probably get, we're gonna drill in uh, probably uh, roughly two, two or th two and a half diameters, something like that, something like that. See what that looks like. Yep, that should be plenty of engagement. Okay. And then, actually, while I'm here, I should uh, go ahead and put the radius on that while I'm in the lathe. Let's go ahead and break that corner. Can you see it? Yeah, you can kind of see it. I'll, I'll get a better shot. Alright. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm just going to break that edge so it's nice. I've taken the black oxide off of the uh, off of these the bits, and then um, that's that one there. So they're just a slip fit in there, okay? And that's how we're gonna we're gonna braze them in. And then so then I also made this this guy here. This is a little welding fixture here. And the idea behind this dude is uh, like that. So that's the welding fixture. Gets those at a nice 90. They're all at the same uh, relative height. And uh, I can clamp these down and then get a nice pretty weld in there. And then I can, I can bias this one way or the other if I feel like it. Um, although I'll probably just go with uh, um, symmetric there. So it's actually like that, sorry. Okay. Anyway, so just, you know, simple Simon. All right, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna weld this first. I'll take weld this first, and then uh, we'll silver braze the uh, the bits into the uh, into the, the cross. And I'm just gonna clamp these down so they uh, stay nice and flat. Push those together nice and tight while we get them uh, tacked together. Uh, looks pretty good. Fire it up. a little bit then I'll flip it over and start my welding on the other side um, in this case
access that a little easier. you're brushing stainless steel welds it's always helpful to brush them when they're not just after you weld them but after they've cooled a little bit but there's still some heat in the uh, in the part the whatever oxide uh, layer forms is a lot easier to brush off when it's warm than when it has a chance to fully cool so Almost ready here, so I'm just gonna clean these one more time here. Rinse them out with some alcohol, and then I'm using this uh, Superior Flux. This is the uh, the dark, um, high temperature silver brazing flux, and it dries out on you. Okay, so it's kind of a little bit dry right now. It's like a kind of a dry paste. I'm just gonna put like one tiny drop of uh, some you can use water or something that'll flash off when you uh, when you start heating it up and um, make a, a little softer paste out of it like so uh, so that's just easier to work with there and then uh, I don't know let's do let's do the big one first so I'm gonna put some flux down the hole kind of coat the inside of the hole and an old timer you know taught me uh, uh, don't put any flux where you don't want uh, your stuff to flow so that was kind of his rule uh, if you put it on carefully and um, um, then you got a better chance of the stuff not uh, not flowing where you uh, don't want it to flow and then he used uh, he used to use like graphite to as a mask uh, too to uh, um, I'm just gonna spread that on there with my my finger there. Uh, use graphite from a pencil uh, as kind of a mask to uh, keep uh, flux and uh, and brazing material from flowing where he didn't want it to flow. Okay, so I'm gonna go in there. All right, and we'll peel a little bit of that off. Okay, so let's. Uh, Put it in the vise and then uh, get the torch going. Okay, get this going here. I'm just gonna hold this down a little bit. Get that off of there. The it wants to pop out. So what we're looking for is a, you keep your eye on the flux, you know, if you've matched your flux to your, uh, your brazing material, then uh, you keep an eye on the flux, and when the flux, you'll see it here in a sec, getting close, it's getting clear, all right, it almost disappeared there, kind of turned real clear. Here's the, this is the hard part, is don't touch it, right? Just get off. If it looks good, just quit it, like that, all right? So. That's the difference between an apprentice and a journeyman. The journeyman knows when to stop, 
well, almost always. <laughs> the journey or the uh, the apprentice keeps going <laughs> and then learns. <laughs> All right, there's the finished product there. Yeah, there's the there's the old one that's looking pretty uh, pretty used at this point. Um, so I do do a little bit of, of straightening so that they they spin reasonably well because a lot of times uh, when you're not doing the torque thing, you're you're doing a fast spin here with this with the small diameter, right? You know, when you got a fastener, you're giving it the quick uh, one two, and then you know give it the gronk. But there's the uh, there's the freshy. It's got a little wobble to it. I may these things when they come, they're not perfectly straight. So don't be alarmed if uh, you buy some of these and they're a little bit. They have a little bow to them. Um, they're not perfect. So anyway, here's the there's there's the deal. Zip, boom. Swap those out. Spin those in. Boom. And then give it the give it the beans. Okay. All right. Uh, thanks for watching guys. So that's the uh, double, I don't know, what do we call this thing? Need a good name for this. Uh, I just called it a double-ended T-handle before, but uh, uh, there's been enough commentary about this thing that it probably deserves a special name.